and sisters. I'm gonna put a Bible verse up. Um, I wish I could do a random one, but it starts at Genesis, like it should. But let me, um, let me put uh, John 3:16. Why not? That's the verse that's on the uh, screen right there. I didn't do it because it's a typical verse. Um, huh? That's actually a verse I have to look into now. I'm curious about that verse, actually, because I don't believe in the Trinity, so I don't, uh, I don't know how I would square that. I guess the, the whole thing would be with the, uh, the word God. I guess that would be the, uh, thing. So, yeah, anyways. <laughs> so I wanted to see this video. It's called, um, called When Was Jesus Really Born? The reason I got interested in, in this video is because I was, uh, scrolling on TikTok and, um, I had seen that video and I, I started to watch it and I stopped it because I wanted to finish the rest on uh, a video here and uh, I ended up watching the actual like the original video from the clip but like I said I'd be go right on the video. So we're gonna watch it again. I don't think I watched the whole thing so that's a plus but we are gonna watch um, some of what I already did. I, I want to put the created part in quotations because it's it's not, it's not created, it's begotten or exist. It was Yahusha <laughs> eternal. Maybe I should name it that, but yeah, that's what I have it named as. Um, so I went all the way down here and I added a link to a, a note that's called Birth of Yahusha. So we're going to go here. I have all these notes that I wrote down when I did um, make the video for. So um, yeah, so we're going to watch. I actually like this layout a lot. It looks... Uh, Pretty neat. I've never seen Latin, nothing like it. So creative. Was Jesus born on December 25th? No. His hat says no. <laughs> Is that so? Oh, no, it says no. no well, it there not. we go, folks. Okay, that's it. You can all go home go. now. We <laughs> don't have to worry <laughs> about all those presents. We just wiped Christmas yeah. out, so we'll see. Yeah. Well, the first, let's, I mean, well, let's, and let's do it, I mean, as if we were, you know, biblical detectives and we're here in the, okay. in the Holy Land. Okay. First of all, in, first clue. Luke 2, it says, And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Mm -hmm. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. That alone is a clue right there. It is? Well, yeah, it is. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Might as well put him in here. It is? Well, yeah, absolutely. Because people who argue December 25th mm -hmm. seek to deal with this. The, the rabbis say in the Talmud that shepherds would only be out in the fields around March um, until the next rainy season. season. So people argue, well, you know, the winter there is not, the winter is still gets cold there too. I mean, if you've been to Israel That's in the winter, I, I, it does get, I've been there when there's been snow. I wrote it's not, so it's not just that there. This is why I wrote this on the note right here. I wrote all these notes based on what he said. They're, out, they're, they're not just keeping their sheep in the pens. They're out in the fields and at night, which is very strange. Why would they be out in the fields at night? Well, you know, some people have argued, this is another one, that he was born in the autumn, he was born during the Feast of Tabernacles, which I understand because they say, well, God tabernacling with us. The problem with that is that, that during Tabernacles, the males had to all be in Jerusalem. So the birth of Messiah caused, would, would not cause Joseph to break the law by being outside of Jerusalem when he's born. It's not going to do that. The birth of Messiah is going to fulfill everything. So there is one time of the year that shepherds would especially be out with their flocks at night. Only one. That's in the springtime. Why are they watching their flocks at all hours? Because shepherds during one particular time do that. It's when the sheep's give, sheep give birth to lambs in that net, the lambing season. That's the only time. That's where they're watching at any time of day, any time of night, they're watching for any birth. That's the only time. And when would that happen? This is the exact, this is the exact uh, point where I stopped the video and I was like, I need to make a video about this. This is actually the, uh, pretty fascinating. So I thought it would be something good to look into since I did want to do a study on this eventually. And I guess eventually is now. So I, I always figured that he was born in April, uh, like the beginning you know, the first month, the beginning, springtime, all that uh, uh, imagery, it, it kind of, like, it matches up. So that's what I thought. And then, but yeah, so that's that uh, video. What happened? The lambs are not like people. They're only born at one time. 
I never knew that. Yeah. I must be a dummy. Honestly. No, no. Lambs are only born <laughs> at a certain time of the year, not like us. They can only be born at a certain season. Lambs are born in the springtime. That's the first thing. They're born in the springtime. They could start as early as, as February, but it really would go March, April. That's the center. That's the Hebrew month of Nisan. We're going to also go through the, Nisan is that month. Or so I'll during be that, they'd be watching it, which all fits together because, you know, the shepherds, their job is to watch because a lamb, they have to make sure that lamb's okay. So it's what a perfect thing to begin with because Jesus is the lamb yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. So why would God have, who would he have to greet the birth? Oh. Shepherds who oh. are watching for the birth of the lamb. So here, that's so perfect of that's God. Cool. Messiah is the Lamb of God, and they're there greeting. That's what they're doing. And so, and where is he born? He's born in Bethlehem or Beit Lechem. And the thing is that, that Bethlehem, people don't know this, because of some clues we have in the writings of the rabbis, was actually a place where the lambs that they had were actually the lambs for the temple sacrifice. Oh. Bethlehem especially was the lambs for the temple sacrifice. Really? So that's actually... Uh well, that, I wrote that here, but I thought that was pretty uh, impressionating as well. So all the all the claims, basically, I I put this under the uh, header claim because I take these all as claims until I do more research on them. I'm not just like blindly believing anything that uh, anyone says. Write it down under claim. So here, what more perfect place and time, Messiah born at the time of the lambs when the sacrificial lambs are born wow. in the place where they're born. Now, yeah. here's something else that is going to you know, point to this period. In, there's a clue in Exodus. Exodus 12 says, take a lamb, a male, one year old, it's the Passover lamb. And so now you can read that and miss something. The, the lamb that is the Passover lamb and Jesus, Yeshua, is the Passover lamb is, is a year old at the time of Passover. So it means it had to be born a year before in the springtime mm -hmm. to be a year old. Mm -hmm. So here Messiah, you know, so the That part I didn't understand. I don't know what he's saying there. I have no idea about, maybe I'm slow, but that, I don't get it. If somebody knows what he's trying to say there, uh, please write it in the comments because, again, I have no clue if this is even a valid thing. So the, the Passover lamb dies on Passover. Messiah is the Passover lamb. He dies on Passover. But it's also born at the time of Passover. That's Nisan, the spring. So Messiah, if the lamb, if the Passover lamb is born at the same time when it dies. So that's the next clue. And so oh. the, first, the next thing is the holy day. Next okay. Oh, okay. So he's saying that the Passover lamb is uh, born on Passover. So, and he also dies on Passover. Okay. Yeah, because the Pesach, they usually do the lamp thing, Egypt. And, um, so the blood thing. Wait a minute. A lot of things are coming to me right now. You guys are witnessing it. Now that I've looked into, like, the blood and everything and, the, and how the Bible makes connections, like, everywhere, everything is connected, basically. So, Yeshua is the lamb, the Passover, okay, well, yeah, the Passover lamb, but, like, I just started thinking about the blood, and how, if, uh, if they didn't have the blood over the doorpost, the firstborns will die, and, oh, that's, like, the Tola lamb, oh, oh, wait, okay, wait, I gotta write this stuff down, okay, I gotta go my, to my crimson, See, this is why Obsidian is so useful. Okay, so Scarlet, Scarlet, go there, and then this is how the thinking thing works, so you see, you get to see it in action. So, uh, okay, so life cycle of, okay, parallel to Yahusha, and then under that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another header, or just, yeah, Egypt, because the firstborn... So when when the Tola worm gives birth, she uh she stains all of her children red, and the uh, and uh, Moses instructed the Israelites to paint their door with the blood of the lamb, so that all the firstborn the firstborn uh don't die, so their firstborns don't die. So in relation to the crimson worm, if uh I don't know if hold on. So what is the point of the the point of the blood on the babies? So it's because the mother dies. While the mother dies, the uh the crimson worm 
or the tola worm releases a uh, crimson substance that stains the children scarlet so jesus dies and then blood we are the children are we also considered firstborns i guess so i mean that would be the only thing that i can that it could be pointed to now, who is the first firstborn it's usually the the righteous uh righteous offspring sometimes it means literal firstborn and sometimes it means more like righteous one i don't know i'm gonna have to make that another study but i'm getting somewhere with this the next clue is the holy days of israel and here's here what does that have to do with with this mystery well the central events of messiah's life and his time on earth they all take place on Hebrew holy days. Right. I mean, all, and, and we'll start, and one people don't even realize, Palm Sunday, the first thing is he's going to his passion, getting on that dock, going there, that's a Hebrew holiday. People don't realize the first Hebrew holiday ever given to Israel was Palm Sunday. And, the, and where it is, yeah, it doesn't say Palm Sunday, it's, it's in Exodus 12 when it says, take a lamb on the 10th day of the month, you'll take the lamb, you'll keep it for four days, you'll take the lamb to your house. That's called the 10th of Nisan, the first, command given to Israel to continually keep. The 10th of Nisan is the day of the lamb, the day that they take the lamb to their house, keep it there mm -hmm. until the time of the sacrifice. So what happens? The 10th of Nisan, count back from the Last Supper as Passover, for the 14th, 15th of Nisan, go back, you are at Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the 10th of Nisan. It's the first Hebrew day ever given, and it's the day that they are actually, they're, when he's coming to, to Jerusalem, they're all taking the lambs to their house. God is taking the Lamb of God to his house oh. on the day of the Lamb being taken to the house. Oh, my. It is, it's all it's there. It's really amazing. And, and, the first, and the first thing in this, the first command ever given to Israel to go was, think about this, was take the Lamb. In Hebrew, you can translate it, accept the Lamb, mm. receive the Lamb. The first, he, the first command he gives to the Jewish people is, accept the Lamb. And so, and they still, and when they fulfill that first commandment, it's all the age is complete. But that was the very first command, and that was the day. And it also can be even translated, seize the lamb. He comes into Jerusalem, mm. he's going to be seized. But so all the lambs, he's watching them come in, and he is coming as the lamb of God. God is moving him, getting ready for the sacrifice on the same mm. day. I mean, God is so perfect, Amazing. so perfect. So everything, that's just one. I didn't even mean wow. to share on that. That's one. That's and the thing is that, and then, and then when does he die? He dies on the other Hebrew holy day, which is Passover, the lamb. When does he rise? He rises on the other Hebrew holy day. We can do a whole thing on this. The feast of first fruit, the day of the first fruit, when the first fruit is lifted up from the earth as the new life, after the, the, the new life of God, he is raised up as the first fruit. Paul even says, he's the first, it's on the day of the first fruit. Everything happens. Let me write that down. Then you think of what's the next great event of the church? It's Pentecost. Pentecost is a Jewish holiday. People don't realize that. Yes. Pentecost is Shavuot in Hebrew. You know, you know that, that the word Pentecost is a Jewish word that those, those same Greek rabbis who, who, came up with the, who came up with that, the tower calling it the, the, the come let us build a tower, they're the same ones who came up with the name Pentecost. And Pentecost is a Jewish holiday. In fact, or, there are some Orthodox Jews will know that they're celebrating Pentecost. They were the first Pentecostals because they're <laughs> celebrating that. Moses was the Pentecostal. He told them to celebrate this. And in Greek, it's Pentecost 50 days. In Hebrew, it's Feast of Weeks. Same thing. So everything happens on a Hebrew holiday of his life. His death, his True. resurrection. So, of course, his birth. God is very accurate and absolute. It's going to happen on a significant holy day of Israel. So the question is, which, which one? It begins in the springtime. The first feast is Passover. The age begins with Passover, Messiah on the cross. And it ends with tabernacles when God will come down and tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so, so we, we can do a whole thing on this, but the whole age is that. So when would he be born prophetically? It's not going to be in the autumn. That's the second coming. Got to be in the spring again. It all points back to the spring. And it's got, it points back to this month called Nisan, which means the beginning. The month means the beginning. That's what it means. That's where it all begins. So, and everything he does in order. Yes, Palm he Sunday, does. he does it according to those days. So if you got, you count back, you got resurrection in the, the Nisan, you got Passover 15th of Nisan, you got Palm Sunday 10th of Nisan, you only have a few more days from the beginning that this has got to happen. So it's narrowing it down now to the very first days of Nisan. And so now the, now the, next, the next clue. Every day, every time he fulfills a holy day, he doesn't just fulfill the time, it, the theme of that day, he fulfills it. For instance, Passover, he dies as the Passover lamb. First fruits, he rises. So everything has to do with that. Is there any day on the Hebrew calendar that would match up with birth, new beginning, new everything? Well, there is one day, and it happens to be a Nisan. 
And the one day is Nisan 1, which is the very beginning of the Hebrew year, the very day that begins everything. And so, and this is the day that it's the very, it's the new, it's the real new year, though most, most Jewish people think Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, Rosh Hashanah. It's not. The new, the real new year of God is Nisan 1. Now, the thing about Nisan 1 is you don't have to be in Jerusalem. There's no command to be in Jerusalem, yet it's a holy day, so uh-huh. Joseph could be there at that time. Uh-huh. And it's also, it's the, think about this. It's the day, it's the day that begins the calendar. It, it changes the calendar. The, the old calendar is gone. The new calendar begins. What does Messiah's birth, his birth do when he comes to, to this world? He changes the calendar. Yeah. The whole calendar right. is changed, B.C., A.D., and there's one, one day in the Hebrew calendar that matches that, and that's Nisan 1. It's the calendar changer. We know there was something that happened. Anyone into the stars would have seen it. There was a convergence of Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, Mars, all converging to one part of the sky. Okay, what do we got there, buddy? I don't even know what to make of that. Well, we got to look into the planet someday. I guess this would be a good time to tell you guys that uh, I don't, I don't necessarily believe in uh, the globe. So there's that. So the planets thing is really throwing me off right now. I and there was also something called a double occultation. But anyway, there's all these things happening. And, but they said, where is the king of the Jews? There was a...